Hello everybody and welcome to another Gengury Max live broadcast number 64 and anybody who doesn't know what that why that number is isn't is significant look up my autobiography one day yes it's broadcast number 64 and I got things to show you only a little not a lot only a little but very very clever but before any of all that I'm gonna see if everyone can hear me because we don't want Lee talking in a room all by himself. At least not right now. So I'm going to have a look. Can we hear? Hello all yellow um, hunting wabbits. <laughs> so I'm going to keep looking for that all important. Everyone can hear me. Uh, can anybody hear me at all? Going to keep reading. I've already seen it, Prebinori leapt in there, we can hear you, exclamation mark, wonderful, thanks very much for that response. The format of this broadcast, pretty straightforward, if you're uh, lucky enough to join us live in the live chat, ask your questions, type out a question that you have for me, put a question mark on the end, and in the end of this broadcast, I'll pick a few questions out in the order they were answered, for the most part, and I'll answer them for you. And if it's related to something I'm talking about today, great. If it's something general about Game Guru Max, great. If it's just some random question, also great. Just remember, and it happens from time to time, these random questions push somebody else's real Game Guru Max question out the way, and it's, it's not very nice. So just bear that in mind. Let's all be very nice and polite today, shall we? Okay, so let's crack on. I'll show you some stuff. I'll launch the software. The first piece of news... Um, that I'd like to say is I have finally bitten the bullet <laughs> You might see where I'm going with this finally bitten the bullet and I've upgraded our bullet physics engine to the very latest version Which is something like bullet 3.16 or 3.18 um, But effectively the bottom line is now we're on the latest greatest coolest version of our, of our, of our physics engine which means we can do lots of new cool things that we couldn't do before with the version we've been using for many, many years. So that was, uh, let's say it was super difficult, but it was a, a trudge to make sure that in upgrading the bullet physics engine, we didn't ruin all the existing functionality. So stage one was just to get it upgraded carefully, and then stage two was to test all the existing functionality. And I'm really pleased to report all of that went very smoothly. It took some time, but very smoothly. Of course, the benefits of having the latest bullet is I can now save um, the post-optimized meshes that are generated during the process of creating levels and such. A typical example is if I just click test game now and count one, two, two seconds. So that two seconds is a huge chunk of terrain all around here. Um, that was previously generated, which maybe took about six seconds, but then I was able to save that optimized mesh and then reload it. Um, and now I can reload it in less than two seconds. So on a large level with lots of stuff going on, I think I put an object in, every, in the four corners of the editable area, and the physics part took 21 seconds to generate all the meshes and then calculate the physics and then save it out. And when I ran it again, it just loaded in the result of all that, and that took 12 seconds. So I've basically halved the time it takes. And in the process of looking at the data that it was generating, I also think that I can improve how much memory it's taking, thus how much data is being generated, thus how quickly that takes. So I think I can even gain more performance on even very large terrains. Another thing is that currently we're using something called triangle meshes in order to generate the terrain mesh. Well, I've been looking through the latest version, the, the examples and the documentations for Bullet version 3, and it looks like they've made some good advances and tweaks in their height fields. Height fields is instead of triangles, it's just a big map of height values, and it works out physics uh, terrain based on that, which means it's one-sixth the memory uh, requirement because it's just restoring one float instead of the six floats that you need, possibly even more actually, um, in order to store that triangle information which is generated separately and then stored just for the use for the terrain physics. Um, 
I also noticed that in the previous bullet version, we haven't really implemented very well the multitasking element. I always thought that we had some element of multitasking in there. I'm not so sure anymore. The good news is there's some really great examples on how to very easily select the multi-threading capabilities of the latest Bullet 3 so it spreads out all the physics solvers across however many threads your computer has. So this is actually speaking to actual physics performance. So if you put like 500 barrels on the top of a hill and they all roll down, you've now got like 15, 20 threads all figuring out and solving how that physics gets resolved. So lots of really cool performance opportunities. Now we're on bullet three. So yeah, I suppose that's the long version of saying Lee just upgraded the physics engine to bullet version 3.1. So how do I demonstrate that? Well, I think the best way is to show you one of the other things that I've been doing, which is um, changing all the libraries were necessary to convex holes. So I did a scan and over, I think about 800 of the objects were using polygon collision, which is the worst form of physics collision you can have. If I just drop in a few cacti, which was the, <laughs> this was the culprit really. In the old version, even the last Friday's build, if you ran up to this cactus, this cactus is about 30,000 polygons. And so you ran up to it and the physics object would just go and I tried to calculate and resolve an insane amount of uh, physics bounces. Bottom line is your FPS dropped. Now if I just drop in Sturt Merka and then go into run into the cactus, you'll actually see that the performance doesn't slow down. If I switch on my debugging, I'm pushing into it. That's usually when you get like 20 FPS. I'm pushing into it, no slowdown at all. And the reason for that, if I show you the, um, it's not on there, little trick for anyone who's interested, if you go to developer and tick developer options, run your game, um, and then go into your tab tab and you can see a new component called physics and you can click render physics shapes you actually see these green outlines. These green outlines are actually indicating the convex holes. What that means is I've just taken a 30,000 uh, polygon object and this is about 36 polygons. And now you know where the performance gain comes from. You can still, it's still physics, you know, you're not gonna be able to push into the cactus. You're just no longer asking the physics to simulate 30,000 teeny weeny little facets. You don't need it. Your player capsule's huge. You don't need that level of detail in your physics. And so these are what's called convex holes. They don't always work for every object, such as a door frame or a building. And that's the next thing I'll be looking at. One of the next things, I should say. Um, what is uh, the difference between a door frame and a cactus? Well, there's a hole through the middle of the door frame. And if you just created a convex hull of a door frame, you wouldn't be able to go through the middle of the door. It would stop you. So we need something called hull decomposition. And effectively all that means is it breaks up an object into smaller convex holes and then glues them back together. So a door frame, which has two pillars, one on the left, one on the right, and one over the top, will become three convex holes glued together in the same position, but leaving the hole in the middle so you can run through it. And so that's hull decomposition, and that's what I'm looking at next. I, everything else is either a box or a sphere or a cylinder, um, or a convex hull, which is what you're going to get in this Friday's build. And if I've got enough time, talent, and I can get there really quickly, I've also got hull decomposition, which also means that if you drop in a building, then you'll have super fast physics collision on there. Not to say that it isn't right now, it's just there are some things, like let's say a fence with lots of polygons, and you brush up to the fence whilst crouching, you might have a bit of a performance drop. Well, convex hull decomposition, and then saving that optimized shape, so it can then be loaded very quickly and constructing your physics universe. Everything's suddenly now loading very fast, and your physics, when you're up to it, is also very smooth and doesn't hit your performance in any way, shape, or form. And even if it might do, because you've got 100,000 objects on, the fact that you're now going to have multi-threading eliminates that concern as well. So that's really what I've been focusing my efforts on this week to make sure that we've got fast loading of your test levels and we've got fast physics as well. Um, one last thing I'll show you. You had it for last Friday's build, but it was only implemented after the Wednesday broadcast. So 
So if I just drop in our Xander, so you, 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 and you, and I also give myself some armament and maybe 420 bullets, and run the level again. Now these guys, um, they're going to get cleverer as the week unfolds, but what you've got now <laughs> is Rangel. So obviously with four of them, I have to... Uh, <laughs> So you see, they can die, you can die, everyone's now got damage. So you can see I've got my ragdoll for all my characters. Uh, and you'll get that in this Friday's build uh, as well. And the last thing I wanted to, to reveal before I go to your questions, so if you've got any questions, please answer them, ask them, sorry, is I've discovered that the nav mesh generation is infinitely slower than any terrain physics generation that was done. Through all of my metric analysis, uh, the nav mesh generation for the same size area is three times slower than the old physics generation stuff. So it's clear where I need to focus my time. The good news is I've implemented something which, after you've generated the nav mesh for the first time, you don't need to generate it for the second time. So on a large map that you might create, <coughs> currently there's a bit of a slowdown as it's generating all that. But the second time you run the level, that nav mesh has already done it, reuses it, and of course it's much quicker the second and subsequent times you go into your level. But I'm not happy but with that initial weight, that initial nav mesh generation that happens every time you boot up the software, load in your level, and click test level. It takes that time to generate the nav mesh, it doesn't save that nav mesh out. So what I've decided to do is go back and look at that nav mesh. Um, specifically, I know about the train as soon as the train generator is finished with it. I think from that moment, I have a couple of threads dedicated to generating the nav mesh in the background. So by the time you actually do click test level, the nav mesh is, if not already completed, then very nearly completed. And so you don't have to sit around and wait for that one to finish. But just to give you some ideas of metrics, um, where the terrain physics for a very large terrain physics area was 21 seconds, the same area for nav mesh was 61 seconds. So it gives you some kind of idea of how that loading time is proportioned. In theory, now we've eliminated uh, physics uh, loading to very, very quick, like this d level that you've just seen here, which is quite a large terrain physics area, two seconds. If I can do something similar with nav mesh, so it's practically you know, instantaneous or nearly instantaneous, then you can click that test level button and within five seconds you're running around the level you've created, even without any pre-cached stuff. So that's what I wanted to show you today. Like I said, I'm going to be, after this broadcast, I'm straight on to looking at hull decomposition and the nav mesh system, just to make sure that we have even better physics and we are faster loading when you click test level, which is one of the frustration points. I've also, as I was going through, just making sure we've got a good build on Friday, done all the other little niggles. You may have noticed previously that um, when you was high on a hill and you moved your camera, it was moving really fast. Uh, that's because it was taking its altitude measurement based on ground zero. Now it actually takes its altitude measurement from where the actual terrain floor is. So you can see I'm just moving backwards and forwards. It's not shooting him at 3,000 miles an hour through his head. And it basically, as I go up into the sky, you'll notice that it gets faster and faster the further away you are from the ground, which of course means you can do big zoomy motions up in the sky. But then when you want to get down and dirty with some of your objects, the camera slows down and then you're back to reasonable moving the camera around at the speed you would want. And, a, and another few little ish, uh, fixes as well, like uh, if I left the app and came back a minute later, all the animated objects would do jiggly jiggly and then restore themselves. That's because the time delta wasn't reset when he came back to the app. That's all been fixed and also he noticed he's put his arms in the air every time he's moved. So lots of little niggles have been dealt with as well for the Friday build. Even though I've been talking fast and I feel like I've been talking quite fast with not too many ers and ums, I've still managed to eat up 16 minutes. So I think that was a pretty good chunk of content for y'all. Uh, but I do want to give some time to questions. So I'm going to drag this across here. And uh, let's see if we've got any question marks worthy of our fine attendance today. So let's see what we get. Um, not too many posts, so hopefully a few good choice questions. They say talking to yourself is a sign of madness. <laughs> then I've probably been mad since I was 15 years old. Uh, but that hasn't stopped me. 
Thank you for a question, Matt. Here's one. Martin Oliver. Still no object clipping to place objects inside buildings. Entity editing really needs it. Um, just for clarity there, that means let's say you've got a building and you want to place lots of furniture and objects and things on the wall. You kind of have to be in the building and facing the wall in order to place anything. In Game Guru Classic, you could literally lob off the roof and half the wall and just look down as if you cut the building in half. And it was very easy then to place all of the stuff on your floor and your walls and things like that. It's simply a clipping thing and the only reason you don't already have it is that the shaders we use for Wicked Engine doesn't have it out of the box. It's a very weird feature. We actually add it into our Game Guru Classic shaders. It's just a case of adding that extra trick into the shaders of the Wicked Engine and then we can just tie it in with, uh, I think it's pressing tab and then moving uh, a y-axis value up and down to decide where you want to chop. But we always thought that was a bit hit and miss. If your building wasn't exactly on that Y coordinate, you know, you wouldn't get the building uh, roof chopped off. So we did hesitate as to is there a better way. So we're still in that sort of question mark phase. But if you do have any ideas, oh, it can be super intuitive, no matter whether you're on a hill or underwater or wherever, there's something very quickly you can go bang and then it like chops your building or what have you, your tunnel in half. So please post that in the Game Guru forum. Um, which will be populated with lots and lots of questions and answers from today and a recording of this broadcast. Any other questions for Old Lee? Here's one. This is from uh, Marcos. Will be possible make third person games? No. There are no third person games to be created in Game Guru Max for the initial release. This will be first person single player game creation only for the first release. We do have aspirations, as you see up here, for RPG and puzzle style games, but for now, we're just focusing on shooter. We wanna get, we're gonna hit that mark where it's a, it feels as good as a modern shooter game. Once we're at that point, then we can expand out into other areas. There's no point releasing anything half-baked anymore. This really has to be a top product that everyone can just get in, start using and create cool games that actually are fun to play and not embarrassing to sell or share. <laughs> so hopefully that answers categorically our question. Looking for another question. Oh, three question, four question marks, three question marks here. This is from Megoid16. Is the background blurring when he gets close to the cactus? Auto depth of field question mark. Um, Wicked Engine supports it, supports some really nice uh, depth of field stuff, but we don't use it at the moment. We have other little tricks and pieces, like we do have mip mapping, so it blurs off into the distance. We have some more kind of atmospheric scattering that uses the lower levels of mip from the skybox, things like that. But we don't actually have aggressive depth of field implemented at the moment. It probably is just a case of activating the feature and setting the distance. Um, but yeah, that's not really top of a priority list right now. We want to get great visuals, fast performance, stability and good gameplay. Those are really the things that we're all aiming for. And of course finishing off the terrain. You've not seen trees yet. You've not seen grass yet. Um, you've not seen the ability to sculpt and paint your terrain. So all of these things are higher priority at the moment. Looking for another question, with a question mark at the end, of course. This is from uh, Mickey Martin. Are we going to be able to make VR games with the software now? No, nope. this Friday's build, you will not be able to create virtual reality um, first-person single-player games, nor will you be able to play in virtual reality at the end of November when we release this early access version of the software. However, if you've been privy to previous builds, you have seen uh, plans. We do have a VR button, testing VR, a uh, whole control system. We've been working in VR for quite a few years now on parallel products. We are definitely bringing you virtual reality game making, just not for the end of November. It's definitely on the cards, so hopefully you can hold your breath just a little bit longer. So I'm just checking the clock. I have now bashed through the 20 minute mark. I tend not to go waffling on beyond 20 minutes because then I'll easily get to 30 minutes. So I'm gonna pick two questions from people who've not asked me a question before today and the rest of the uh, questions I will answer in the Game Guru forums um, later on along with the recording of this broadcast. So let's see who's lucky enough to have scraped in with a unique question. 
Um, Crown Hill Studios hasn't asked a question before. Will you add bullet holes to objects and terrain and for the characters? Bullet holes for objects and terrain, yes. Bullet holes for characters, no. I'm not going to have a bullet hole attached to someone's leg and that leg is animating. <laughs> that's just, that's a bridge too far. I do have some ideas how we can sort of bloody up characters in different limbs and things like that, but that's a post 2021 idea. But you know, we have been missing bullet holes in the Game Guru universe for such a long time, it's only right we put them back. So what does that mean, bullet holes? It's based on the material that you shoot, you will actually get a fracture point based on that material. So a bullet hole in iron would be looking like a, a rivet. And if it was wood, it'd be splintered wood. If it was concrete, there'd be a shattered concrete. And if it was generic, just to kind of a general splat. So that's what you're going to be looking forward to um, when you shoot the objects, shoot walls, shoot the floor, things like that. So yeah, look forward to that. That's going to happen relatively soon now. And T-Bone, you get the last question of the day. Will there be a debug tool uh, to visibly see the nav mesh? We already have it, my friend. Uh, if I just click on, uh, if I run in the game first, I'm going to get shot out of those four of them. Let's see if we can get rid of them quick. Go, go, go. Yeah, see, realistic weapons. Um, these weapons jam as well. That's how realistic they are. Die. No, that time I just ran out of gun. <laughs> there you go. Uh, they're going to get smarter. There's no way I'll be able to kill these four um, once I've actually beefed up their ability to work together. But what I wanted to show you real quick is the debug manager. Just click show, navigation, debug visuals. See all that yellow bit? All that is the pre-calculated nav mesh um, of the terrain. You see how it moves up and down and around. The reason we need to create nav meshes on the terrain is that when the terrain gets too steep, the character is told that they can't get up sharp inclines. And this will also work on buildings, structures, elevated platforms, watchtowers, whatever it happens to be, this yellow sort of transparent thing is your nav mesh. And so you already get to visualize that. Okay, um, let me just get back to the chat window because <laughs> this is how we usually end. With a lot of questions at the end and just no time to answer them. So I apologise for those who have great questions and I can't vocalise the answers for you. But as I said, I'm going to put them in the Game Guru forums later on. And the benefit is then I get to consider the answer a bit more and use punctuation and maybe a bit more thorough and accurate in my answers. So I hope you enjoyed this week's broadcast. As usual, anyone who's lucky enough to be a pre-order user are going to get this build with a few further improvements Friday. Usually try and get it out by about 6pm, but if I want to do extra testing or add a few extra little tweaks and, and twiddles, then it's usually a bit later. So look forward to that on Friday. And the next time you're going to hear from me is uh, next Wednesday. And it will be 4 p.m. BST. I think we're still on uh, British summer time. So that'll be 4 p.m. next Wednesday for those who have more questions for me and want to find out more what's going on in the inner development world of Game Guru Max. So until next week, I shall say goodbye.